Hey, it's Neuromo, and this time we'll be discussing how to analyze multi-shell diffusion-weighted imaging, also known as DWI, through a typical diffusion tensor imaging model and a more recent compartmental model called NODI. I'm first going to discuss some of the physics behind DWI and how the data is gathered. Then I'll talk about the model of DTI and do a brief walkthrough of how to analyze DWI data with this model. Andy's Brain Blog already has a DTI tutorial on his channel for single-shell data, link in the description. After the DTI practical, we'll move on to the theory behind Nodi and also have a practical tutorial. Finally, we'll learn about the measures we can get through Abtin, a model that uses Nodi metrics. Before getting started, you need to have some software installed on your computer. You will need FSL, Python, specifically Anaconda, and MATLAB, or its free counterpart, Octave. Okay, let's jump into the background of DWI. Typically, DWI is used to explore myelination in the brain. Why do we care about this? Well, on average, there are about 100 billion neurons in the brain, which means 100 billion axons in the brain. And most of these axons are myelinated. These axons are a major component of how information is transmitted in the brain, and being able to describe them could be extremely helpful to be able to accurately model neurons and behavior. Think of axons as cables. The cables need insulation, which is the myelin on neurons, to make the electricity that travels along them go faster. Cables transmit information from one thing to another, just like axons do. We can obtain information about axons in the human brain through diffusion-weighted imaging using an MRI. How is this data collected? Basically, we use the diffusion of water molecules to infer the structure of neurons, in this case, specifically axons. When a water molecule is in an obstacle-free environment, it will diffuse spherically. When in an enclosed environment, like an axon, it will diffuse in an elongated fashion. We describe this diffusion using a word called anisotropy. Higher anisotropy means there are more objects in the environment. How do we tease out these differences in diffusion? Well, we can manipulate the temporal resolution of MRI the echo time, and B gradients. By keeping the temporal resolution and the temporal echo constant, we can vary the B gradient and solve for D, diffusion, in the equation on the screen. What is the B gradient? The B0 is the magnetic field that is aligned along the border of the MRI, which all water molecules are aligned to. A gradient is applied and some molecules move at a lower frequency when this gradient is applied, and when it ends, all the water molecules have the same frequencies but in different phases. The opposite of the first gradient is then applied to eliminate the phase differences causing some molecules to resonate at higher frequencies. The difference between when the first gradient pulse ends and when the second gradient pulse is applied is how we measure water diffusivity. This is the purpose of the B gradient. Now that we have a general understanding of how DWI data is gathered, let's take a look at how we model it with diffusion tensor imaging. Unfortunately, diffusion is only detectable along the axis the gradient is applied to. And back in the early 2000s, due to technical limitations, it was only along the X, Y, and Z axes. Since most fibers don't fall exactly on one of these axes, and measuring diffusion along thousands of different axes wasn't feasible, DTI was created. The DWI measures are fitted to a 3D ellipsoid using eigenvectors and eigenvalues, creating a 3x3 matrix called a tensor over each and every single voxel. The main metric used in DTI is fractional anisotropy, or FA. FA is a summary measure of microstructural integrity of myelin. It's sensitive to microstructural changes, but does not have specificity to what the change is. There are three other measures, mean diffusivity, or MD, axial diffusivity, or AD, and radial diffusivity, or RD. These can be used to figure out what the possible microstructural change is due to. MD measures membrane density, with higher values meaning lower density. AD measures the length of diffusion. RD is a measure of myelination thickness. Thanks for sticking through the whole intro. The next videos will cover how to practically use the DTI analysis on DWI data using the software program FSL.